Hello, this is Terry Fox. Uh, I've been a signal integrity consultant for some time. Uh, obviously, from the fact that uh, I graduated from college in 1969, uh, basically I'm older than dirt. The subject of this uh, video is hot digital, low-level analog, long leads, and a plastic box. Now, how do you control EMI with that set of things? There's no place to hide. So here we go. There are two choices. You can either try to lock an electrical nightmare in a Faraday cage with no external leads, or you can design elegantly and solve the EMI problems at their source. Now, I am a firm, firm believer in solving the problems at their source, whether it's EMI problems or signal integrity problems, etc you've got to solve this at its source. In the beginning there was ground and ground is one and there is no other ground but ground itself. Ground was a plane from which all signals were referenced. The plane was a single voltage side to side and top to bottom. Ground was quiet and ground was good as long as nothing corrupted ground there was peace in the system and EMI could not exist. Then came digital. With digital also came signal routing and the power needed to feed the digital. For those who knew not Maxwell and did not respect the teachings of Hubing and Ritchie, there came poor signal routing with ringing, crosstalk, power delivery networks that created noise which corrupted ground and gave fertile soil from which EMI could sprout and flourish. For those who designed quiet power, vanquished ringing, and let not the return current go astray, there was quiet in the system and EMI was held in check. Then came I.O and EMI was given a new opportunity to arise and corrupt the system. To drive back this attack of evil EMI, it was declared that all ground connections for all I.O. leads shall originate from the same electrical point. Doing so ensured that there would never be a voltage difference between any two ground leads where EMI can go forth and cause mischief. It was also decreed that all I.O. signals must be filtered at the board edge. For signals which could not be filtered, the ground was extended with the I.O. signal to assure that the return current would not go astray. With these measures, EMI was again checked and the system was quiet. How shall we filter I.O.? For there are many different types of I.O. signal. It was declared that static signals must behave like a leaf. In other words, the end of this could not be connected to ground. Two, they must have a low-pass filter to ground at the board edge. Route power with the signal and power is also protected with a low-pass filter. While ground was at peace and signal filters were in place, the EMI was held in check and the system was quiet. Differential signals require a different approach and these were pulse transformers. So here I've got a transformer that goes unbalanced to balanced and here I've got its mirror image that goes balanced to unbalanced. Now examples of transformer coupling include plain old telephone service. This would be a 600 ohm subscriber loop or another example of that would be 10 base T Ethernet that is transmitted over a twister, twisted pair. With transformer isolation the receiver is a totally different power ground reference than the transmitter. Here I refer to it as ground with a big G and this ground with the little apostrophe could be a totally different power source. In other words, there's no relationship between ground here and ground there. The signal has no ground return, parent, return current path for the P return current 
flows on the end lead. The return current for P flows on end. The return current for N flows on P. The two fields cancel and since the signal current and the return current were canceling each other, EMI was again held in check. LVDS was routed as differential, but LVDS was not true differential, and the evil EMI arose again. LVDS signals were really complementary single-ended signals, which require a ground return signal path, as did all single-ended signals. Without this return current path, LVDS could radiate. It was decreed that LVDS must include a ground plane for the return current path and that it must behave like a leaf and power must be distributed along the same path. So this ground is not ground prime. This ground is that ground and a low inductance path between the two points and this thing is not connected to power or ground through a separate path. It has to be a leaf. It was decreed that LVDS must include a ground plane for the return current path and behave like a leaf, and power must be distributed along the same path. Evil EMI was again held in check by heeding the teachings of Maxwell, Hubing, and Ritchie. High frequency single ended signals. They said, no low pass filter for us, for we are high frequency. We can't have a low pass filter to quell the outcry from high frequency single ended signals it was decreed we will extend the ground plane for a return current path as is done with coax or samtech connectors with flex circuits it was further decreed that the receiver must be a leaf and that power must be distributed along the same path as the signal emi was again held in check. Then came analog and analog said we want nothing to do with that wicked nasty noisy digital ground. And we had the ground slicers who cleaved analog ground from digital ground. So here I've got digital ground, there I've got analog ground, I've got a slice between the two, maybe a zero ohm resistor here, and now ground digital is a different voltage than ground analog. Now this caused EMI to arise between the leads connected to GA and to GD. Those who heeded Maxwell, Hubing, and Ritchie removed the cleavage. Again ground was one. I've simply got ground ground analog is now the same ground as ground digital so there's no voltage between these two points ground again was one and the evil EMI was held in check the commandments according to Fox ground is one and shall not be split in two all ground IO leads shall be connected to the one ground Create quiet power, lest thy planes become noisy, and find an antenna from which to radiate. Route and terminate carefully to prevent ringing, for ringing is the root of all types of evil. Let not thy return current run astray, lest it should find an antenna and radiate. Finally, thou shalt never create an antenna which is unfiltered at the board edge or connected to a noisy reference plane. And the boss said this is good for then we can ship and then we can be paid. So this is my little ditty on uh, the short form of how to uh, control EMI uh, this is my full-time business, so if you've got uh, questions about it, please contact me either at tfox at siemc.com or there's a phone number 
there's the website and I hope you have a good day thank you